if you're like most creators I know, including myself, titles are like the thing we dread the most when it comes to uploading and publishing our content. I think it's because we know that makes such a big difference. A little bit of a tweak here or there can be the difference between a couple hundred views and maybe potentially millions of views. We know that thumbnails will stop people from scrolling, but titles are often what gets them to click. And most creators that we work with haven't really figured out a good, a good strategy around their titles and getting people to click on them. And today what we want to do is just talk through what that strategy could look like for you it doesn't have to be complicated but there is a strategy for getting the click and today we're going to dive into that deeper than i think we have for a long time hey welcome to the video creators podcast presented by vidiq you know how you put a lot of time and energy into your youtube channel for not nearly enough growth yep we get it we are here today to help you change that Hello creators, how are you guys? It's great to see you again today for another Video Creators Podcast episode like we do here every week, just to help you grow your YouTube channel and reach the people who you're trying to reach with your business, with your content, so you can change their lives with the message that you're spreading. Thank you for letting us be a small part of that with you here today as we dive into some next level tactics and tips and strategies for growing your channel around titles. Today, I am joined with two of the YouTube strategists from our team here. We got Sam. Hey Sam, how are you doing today? Howdy, doing pretty well. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. I think howdy's the thing pretty that's good. like part of your primal branding. Yeah, well, I'm still from Ryan saying. Trahan. I've been watching a lot of Ryan Trahan, and he's oh, got okay. some howdy primal branding, and I, I'm stealing it. He does? So. Well, he's a Texas guy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I guess it's fitting. Yeah. Not so much so, a Florida yeah, thing, but howdy. I'll take it. Yeah, you can say howdy. howdy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we have Ingrid from North Carolina. Howdy. 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 Is that going to be just our thing now? <laughs> no, it's not going to be our thing. <laughs> How goes it? How's it How's it, it being for you? It goes well. It goes well. Yeah, happy to yeah. be here. Excited to yeah. talk titles. 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 Well, this is your idea, Ingrid, um, <laughs> well, for this episode. All of them. Honestly, now, honestly, <laughs> every <laughs> single person writes in asking for this. So. <laughs> yeah, not just mine. The audience yeah. has voted. I think we, the audience, yes, yes, thank you. I am firmly in the audience <laughs> yes. camp. But yeah, this is one of those things that a lot of people ask about. And I think for good reason, because it, it really does have a big impact on how channels grow and uh, and and if your video gets views or, or, or no views. And I think a lot of creators are probably like me and us here at Video Creators. We spend a lot of time thinking about titles. Like even for this episode right now that we're recording, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, like 10 ish titles already before we hit record on them. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all from you, I'm assuming, Ingrid. Is that right? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So we've got The Art of Creating an, an Intriguing Title. We also got The Key to Making Titles That Get Clicked. We have The Ultimate Guide to Clickable Titles. We have Title Formulas That Get Clicked. Number five, the art of crafting the perfect clickable title. We also, number, also number six, you're like clickable title strategy, the ultimate playbook. I think the one that you're, you're going with right now is clickable YouTube titleable strategy, ultimate playbook. How to, but there's also how to write the best YouTube titles over and over and a plan for clicking, for creating clickable YouTube titles that get views. So many, like, uh, so many different options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel when you're writing all those, Ingrid? You know, it varies, I think, from project to project. Sometimes it's easy. Okay. Sometimes they just kind of flow and you just have lots of different things that you're brainstorming. And sometimes it's hard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really <man>. hard. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is kind of what we're going to talk about today. Give give the audience the audience um <laughs> some practical tips i think because some for those days where titles are seriously hard you just need some simple strategies i feel to help i get feel like by. when i'm writing these I, it's like it's like one of those things like taxes i just hate <laughs> doing it i know i have to do it you heard it here. But I don't <laughs> like doing it, and I wish I didn't have to. That's one thing I kind of do like about shorts more than yeah. on-demand content. Is the, the title, like, you need a title, but 
it doesn't rise and fall as much on the title because people are just swiping up. Well, you know, just yeah, but I'll push different. back on that a little bit. Are we going to argue here? Or a yeah, lot. Ooh. Yeah, let's do it. I like conflict. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think titles matter on shorts because you can click into them. Thumbnails don't matter you to can. me. You can. Well, yeah. if you see the title, don't you also see the thumbnail with it? If you're in that in a place but where you're like, like I don't even I tell all my clients, don't worry about the thumbnails on the shorts. <laughs> you know, spend that time doing something else. Yeah, I, I guess I think I'd agree with that. When I'm looking at a at the shorts page on a channel, mm -hmm. like for not in the for in a channel, you know what I mean? Not, not the shorts itself. Yes. Go to actual yes. channel, and I'm seeing all their shorts there. Click on the shorts tab at mm -hmm. the top. Um, you're right. The, the the thumbnail could be like this awkward f freeze frame of like this weird facial expression, but if the title's good. I'll still I'll still click on it. Uh, but either way, it's just like Precisely. one of those things that I just want to make good content. I don't want to have to yeah. like, think about titles, and it's just like this whole different copywriting skill. Um, that yeah. And, and, and the hard part is you don't get to test them. You kind of like you get one for the video and it is what it is. Uh, there's been talks that YouTube might release an A-B testing thing for titles and thumbnails. But the pushback is like, does that really help? Because now everyone just kind of ups their game, you know. So does that really <laughs> help? I don't know. But anyway. I do I do feel there's an art form to it, though, a little bit. Like you you said copywriting a little bit. I feel like there are some real practical things that people should pay attention to when it comes to title strategy. And there is a oh, strategy. Yeah. I totally agree. I think it's kind of, I mean, like a lot of the other things we talk about, I think it's a muscle that you develop over time. And the more you do it, the more you get the more mm -hmm. reps, it just feels more natural and they come to you a little more, more quickly. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Well, I think the main problem most creators, when they're writing their titles, the thing I'm commenting on most of the time is that people are going very much like SEO optimized, so to speak. Like there's, they're they're doing a good job at describing with the right words slash keywords, like describing what the content is, but it's not necessarily enticing or intriguing to actually click on. It's like, oh, okay, I know exactly what's happening here, but I don't feel anything. There's no question mark popping above my head, you know? So, um, Sam, what would you say would be some, like a basic structure of like a good title that someone maybe should consider instead? Yeah. I think the first thing that I like to think of is like, what is the reward that the viewer is going to get for watching this video? You know, how can we, I guess, a make sure that we're, pitching that reward in our title and then b how can we kind of front load that towards the beginning of the title because if we're thinking about places like the homepage where people you know they're most likely on their phone they're scrolling pretty quickly um you know they're, they're gonna have their eye caught by the thumbnail most likely but they're still not gonna have a whole lot of patience to stick around unless they're they're really you know you're you're kind of earning that click from them with the title so um especially if it's a longer title too, and it could potentially be truncated. If you can front load and at the very beginning of that title, ideally pitch whatever benefit they're going to gain from watching the video, it's going to be really compelling for them to want to wanna watch it. Yeah, I feel like this is a very common thing that we see in a lot of um, consultations when we're working with clients one on one is, like you said, Tim, there's a lot of what driven titles, um, just really descriptors is what I call them. Um, and it's funny because they don't even, a lot of times they're not even like crafted for a human. <laughs> you know, they're just stuffed with things that don't make sense or multiple titles or the things that you would never, you have to really think of people, you know, they're reading <laughs> the title. So, and if you want to engage me in some way, you have to treat me like a person and not a robot. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. I, I'm even thinking of like, I feel like sometimes it's the, it's tempting for a creator to think of their channel as almost like a filing cabinet and you categorize your titles mm -hmm. and you categorize your playlists by just having these descriptive episode number 17, you know, and then you describe what, what the sort of video is and then you tuck it away in your channel page because you're always looking at your channel page as the creator and you're very aware of how things line up in the in your page. But um, 
other people who don't know you are going to come across that video and be like, this is the most boring title I've ever seen in my life. You know, if you can describe it in a way that has some intrigue or uh, like you said, Ingrid, optimize it for the person, um, it's going to be way more compelling for them to, to want to click into it. I'm going to yeah. go, I'm going to go back to one of the, the examples that we use over and over again. It's t- truly one of my favorite titles and it's from not another cooking show. It's the grilled cheese sandwich I ate every other day for two years. It's a story, wow. right? Yeah. That's, well, see, I already had a reaction. I said, wow. It's was like a reaction. <laughs> that's so many questions. Like, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, good story. Sorry to interrupt, Ingrid. But, no, you're good. But anyway, I'm going to anyway, I guess. <laughs> Which is story of like, my life every day here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, you need a better job. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it's it, I why would you eat a grilled cheese sandwich every other day? And for 2 years. <laughs> for 2 years. Yeah. So it sparks curiosity. Now I'm curious. Yep. You know? Yep. Sorry, go ahead. And it was accompanied with a great thumbnail and that's why it has almost 5 million clicks. As opposed to how to make a gr- how to make a grilled cheese sandwich you could eat every other day for 5 years. Even even changing it from a story uh, to a how-to yeah. changes the feel like because yeah. if why would you do that <laughs> right? versus yeah. like oh why would i want to learn how to make a grilled cheese sandwich i mean eat, i would eat every other day i don't want to do that you know so what even even changing the how-to now i, I haven't seen that video but ingrid if you watch the video if i watched it could i learn how to make a really good grilled cheese sandwich yeah yeah. Okay, so it's still educational, and the tutorial is probably still there, but it was positioned around the story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's get into some of the strategy side uh, with, with these titles. Um, when we when we think about putting titles together with thumbnails, Ingrid, um, what are some principles we need to consider? Are, are titles more important than thumbnails, or thumbnails more important? How, how do we how do we get this combo to work well for us? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, oh, thank you. You prompted me to say it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I didn't even mean it like that. <laughs> I can always forget that I, I write know. these. I, I turned it up. You, you did a good job. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, it it's interesting because I wouldn't necessarily say one is more important than the other because they work in tandem. So. You know, when I when I work with clients one on one, and Sam, I'm sure you've experienced this, and Tim, t- you too. People will give me thumbnails, you know, and they'll say which one. And my very first question is, well, what's the title? <laughs> because it's really hard to give you great strategic, you know, th- feedback around a thumbnail that's ultimately going to get the click if I don't know what the other component is. So you have to think of them together versus, um, you know, separates. Um, it's I'd say really, the really crucial. seconds are something you should consider as well with that because a title and thumbnail that doesn't make sense until minute eight of the video doesn't really mm-hmm. make sense for the content either. Yes. And that is something that uh, you also, that, like I said, you have to not just look at them working together, but maybe even almost like, I don't know, I'm going to use a visual thing like a triangle, right? The opening seconds is the other component. So, because your hook, you need to make sure that you're establishing that somebody's in the right place. However, you also don't want to give everything away in the title and thumbnail too. Because if you do that, and then you reveal that too early in your video, we see it over and over and over again in clients' graphs. You just have a gradual decline from that point forward. The punchlines delivered in the title and thumbnail, you mean? It's like yeah. the whole point of it, like, oh, I don't need to watch this video anymore because everything I wanted to right. know was right there. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's such a good way to look at it. Like, it's, I have the same follow up question every time, Ingrid, you know, if it's a thumbnail question. Because I, I think it's easy for the thumbnail to kind of take the take the cake in a creator's mind, and then it's oh, I'll yeah. slap a title on there after, and it really has to be this equal push and pull. They have to work together, sort of a thing. So, yeah, I'd agree. I think um, I wouldn't say the title is more important than the thumbnail. I think they just have to work together in conjunction really well, um, and then definitely the opening seconds uh, has to. I, I think you have to have an idea of what your title and thumbnail is going to be 
while you're scripting the video so that you know how to reinforce whatever was presented in the title thumbnail. Um, like I know you'd said a second ago, not to, uh, yeah, not to give the punchline, not to just answer the question in the title or thumbnail or in the opening seconds. Um, but I think too, if you stray too far as you open your video and it's maybe you have this really intriguing title in the thumbnail and it, you just completely start in a whole nother, you know, maybe that you shot your thumbnail image in your home and then all of a sudden you're like in some other place outside and it's just not even related at all you know, that point that can also cause some confusion and cause people to skip ahead and things like that. So um, I know we're talking about titles here, but all of that really does work together kind of as I like that image of a, of a triangle. It does all work together really well. Do you guys think that it's because uh, you've been saying a couple of things here. One is um, like you just said, Sam, have like figure out the title while you're writing the script so that they connect. Um, but I know we also like we did here. Uh, maybe I'm not sure. Maybe I guess I'm not sure how you do this in grid, but you had several different titles. Did you write the titles before writing the rest of this outline Always. to this episode? The title so is you, the very first, first thing that I do. Yeah. And then you write the content and then you go back and reevaluate the titles? The title is the first thing I do. Then I do the thumbnail, thumbnail concept. Mm -hmm. um, and then I craft the outline. And then I go back and I reevaluate the titles to see if they're going to line up with everything. And then to see if I can hone in on it even better in a more intriguing way. That's where I start to fine, fine tune it. And you're giving yourself a lot of options there too, not just mm -hmm. like one yeah. title. Um, like we've, like you wrote 10 potentials for this one and the 10 for this one were pretty similar to each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, but bit, sometimes yeah. they're like completely different, <laughs> you know, same concept, mm -hmm. but totally different words, different language, not different language, um, same, all English, but you know, like different uh, <laughs> uh, concepts. Um, yeah. Yeah. And words, I guess, would be the right way to put that, uh, where it's just different. What about, what about you, Tim? I'm curious, in all the thousands of videos that you have made over the years, um, what have been like your best best practices for titles? Well, I think the best practices are changing. Like the back in early 2000s or 2010s, um, here we are in 23 now. Um, back, back then, it was people were like skeptical, like, do I want to spend time on this platform or is this really worth my time? You know, and so the titles were less about intrigue and a little bit more about describing. And it was commonplace to repeat your title in the opening seconds of the content and reinforce, like, yes, that was even yeah. a best practice in the YouTube uh, creator playbook when they first made that was um, reinforce what your video is about, like in the opening seconds. So whatever the title is, you should repeat that well that's changed in the past 15 years 10 years that now that leads to abandonment because people are already like i know that's why i'm here get on with it right and for you to repeat it now leads to audience abandonment and the poor retention graphs so it's different now than it was back back then um back then i would also i didn't follow some of this advice i'd think of an idea and i'd up, be uploading the video while trying to figure out the title the thumbnail is which is common for most mm -hmm. creators yeah. and but you can't get away with that anymore now it's got to be the opposite the other way around so a lot of what i did in the past 15 16 years something whatever it's been is um it's had i've had to iterate and change and adapt over time for sure Another thing I've heard with titles is that putting numbers in the titles makes it uh, the value a little bit more clear, makes it a little bit more tangible. I know exactly what I'm getting. Uh, but I've also seen that when people put numbers in their titles, like if it's five ways to do something, people skip ahead. Number one, okay, I get it. Number two, number three, and once as soon as they kind of get the idea of number five, boom, they leave the video. They abandon it. So it doesn't tend to always lead to great audience retention graphs. Putting numbers in there. Um, what have, what have you guys seen? What, do, do numbers matter? Do they not matter? Should we put those in the titles? Three ways to or five ideas for or whatever, or try to avoid that and just go for something a little bit more um, not as specific. 
I feel like it used to be a very commonplace thing, especially with how-to content, um, educational content. But I, I, I find myself having this conversation with creators a lot lately. Why do you feel that they're clicking in? Well, I have seven ways for them to do this. Is that the real value that you have seven you seven things? as opposed to nine or three? Is that <laughs> yeah. what you're saying, right. Ingrid? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because I feel like people think that people are clicking in because they have three things, because they have five things, because they have seven things. And so, a lot of the creators that I work with closely, they've now been changing how they've been doing their titles for, away from that, still doing the five, seven or whatever things that they're doing. But it's just creating a higher value for that, for the uh, viewer. And that's being shown in the retention graph. It's not why people are clicking in. They're clicking in for the value that they're pitching in an intriguing way with the title instead. They're t telling the story visually and in the title as well. So that's the reason that people are clicking in. It's not because of a number. So would you say, I'm making this up right now. <clears throat> if I did a video that was... Top 101 dad jokes ever told versus <laughs> That's a lot of dad jokes. I know, but it's more intriguing <laughs> than two. Dad jokes. <laughs> I don't know if I would click into that. That's a lot. That's a big number. Sam, would you click into that? I probably would. Cause I love dad jokes. So see, okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> oh boy. I'm feeling a right dad audience. joke coming Good on title. Some, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> right titles for the right audience. <laughs> there you go. But uh, versus, um, 18 solid minutes of dad jokes straight or something like that. You know, it's a little long, but, um, but both of those have numbers in it. Um, would you say, Ingrid, that would be better? Just forget the 101 or the 18 minutes of or whatever and just go straight for like, what would you say? The best dad jokes best, ever the told? The best dad jokes. Well, and I would probably take it a little bit further. I don't know. Yeah, I'd want to say like dad I have jokes. All sorts of things. Dad, I have all sorts of things in my head. <laughs> yeah, dad jokes to guarantee your wife to roll her eyes or something like that. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Guarantee to make your kids I laugh. I don't, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to laugh, not roll their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the, dad, the best dad jokes to guarantee a laugh. <laughs> okay, so you would keep it more ge generic instead of putting numbers like 101 or um, yeah. 18 minutes of or something. Well, first off, I'm not going to click in if you say 18 minutes because <laughs> yeah. that just wow. feels long. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that is kind of also the point, though, too, um, because the f more we're on social media and now TikTok and shorts and we have shorter and shorter bite-sized pieces of content, if I see nine or seven, I don't know if I'm going to stay for that. And I don't know if I want to even start the watch session. That's actually what I start thinking. But that was not what I was thinking five years ago. I find that the more time I spend on YouTube, the more selective I become because I've been burned yeah, too true. many times. Mm. <laughs> By like, ooh, this looks good. Oh, never mind. It's not. Yeah. Uh, I see a lot of people also use like these double titles. They put like one title and then like they put that little line. We're going to call this like mm -hmm. shift backspace, that thing. And mm -hmm. then they put another title to it. Uh, and then they add hashtags to it yes no good bad pros cons maybe sometimes other times not what do you think I, I think it just adds clutter to it um i'd say definitely with the hashtags i it's just not necessary to put it in your title um you know if you feel strongly about having a hashtag you could put it in your description Unless it's hashtag shorts no. Yeah, you know, it was it was necessary in the beginning. I don't know if it's so necessary anymore. I mean, we're all still doing yeah. it or we're all still putting them in the description. I think hashtags belong in the description. I just don't think they're I agree. Yeah. human reading. It's not, it's, right. I don't even know how to say that properly, but it's yeah, not it's easy not, to read when I see hashtags. Right. It just I feel like you're forcing clutter. something on me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like three to five max hashtags in the, in the description will do the same thing as putting it in the title. So you might as well put it in the description instead. Um, YouTube used to say put hashtag shorts in the title, but I don't know. I think they probably got good enough where they don't need that anymore. But I haven't tested that yeah. myself. So well, I think that you don't need if you need two titles, then you don't have the right title because <laughs> you just need I, just come up with one really great title. Um, two titles, like Sam said, creates noise. Um, I feel like we need to be thinking of humans versus robots. I don't if you can't make up your mind, then go back to the drawing board. Titles also 
good practice would be under 50 characters. You p- might be able to get away with 55, but depending on how many capitals you use, um, 50 and under is probably good, good practice. Because capital letters are wider than lowercase letters mm-hmm. and they take up more space, right? Yes. Typically. And if you have Most more than 50 or 55, they'll high. get truncated and you're missing all whatever's there. The person's not going to see it. Okay. So when you think about capitalizing uh, titles, first, you capitalize the first letter of each word or only the first letter of the sentence or none of the above? How do you think about capitalizations and titles? I try to think of what am I trying to emphasize here? Um, you know, if we're going to run with the, the the dad jokes title and it's guaranteed to, <laughs> should, to make sure that. roll her eyes, you know, um, or, or maybe like, I don't know, make your kids belly laugh or something like that. I might want to do belly laugh in all caps or something like that. Where I'm really mm-hmm. emphasizing either the reward or the intrigue or kind of the the main emphasis of the whole video. This is what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, Capitals can help emphasize that thing, whatever you're trying to do. There's a, this seems to be one of those things like thumbnails that go through trends on YouTube too. Because years ago, and I'm talking like 2009, 10, 11, the trend was use all caps because it makes your text bigger (laughs) and take up more real estate (laughs) and become more noticeable than lowercase, which are like half the height. So that was the argument then. Uh, but that's certainly not the argument now. Uh, no. Like, oh, you're yelling at me. And to your point, Sam, nothing really stands out to it. So then it switched to like all lowercase because in a sea of video titles that are all caps, lowercase now stands out. <laughs> right? So it's logical. It, it was all lowercase <laughs> for a while. And then people just started um, – uh, lowercase except for one word that was all caps or, or something. Uh, and so I think uh, after that, and this is kind of where I settled until more recently, it was I used to capitalize the first word, like normal proper titling punctuation, mm-hmm. where the first letter of each word is, is capitalized except for and the of and some other conjunctions or something. Um but now I tend to just like capitalize the first letter and lowercase the rest, just like I was writing a sentence in an email or to a friend or a text message or something like that and keep it more on that level. Unless I wanted to emphasize something, then like you said, Sam, I, I, I'll caps a word or two. Am I right? Am I wrong? Is that accurate? Yeah, no, Is that- I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I feel like, I feel like they have evolved and, you know, I've seen a little bit of everything that you've mentioned. I just think that make it easy for the person to read that it, do what's best for the viewer. That should always be the go-to answer, right? For the audience. So if you make it hard to read, like it's all caps, I can't see any of it. If it's all lowercase, same thing. Um, You know, if you capitalize the first letter in each word, to me, that's hard to read, quite honestly. Um, So I like your strategy of just capitalizing the first, like you would in normal sentence structure. Um, I do like to find the title within a title because people do skim, right? And bring emphasis to something if you want to, but you don't have to. And test things out and see what your audience responds to. <laughs> That's the hard part though. Testing things out to my audience responds to. I'm like, oh, they really responded well to this. So what does that mean for my next one? <laughs> you know, it's like, I, it's a long-term uh, experiment. <laughs> yeah. It's like, a, it's, it's a little less, I don't know the right word is. It's an experiment, but it's more of like just learning lessons over time. And then mm-hmm. as you learn it and get better, then about the time you get to that point, things have probably shifted. <laughs> True. <over. laughs> True. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And there's also, I feel like, hey, just experiment and try it. I hear that sometimes, not necessarily from you, Ingrid, but just in general. It's just, okay, I tried it and it didn't work, but I don't know why and I don't know what to try differently next time. 
I know the answer is like, well, just do something differently. It doesn't really matter what it is, probably. <laughs> you know, just try it and keep track of what it was. And um, I think that's the, the non-sexy side of YouTube that most people don't see or think about or even want, really want to acknowledge exists. When we hear other successful creators talk about doing that type of thing and keeping track of it with spreadsheets, we admire them for doing it, but we all do a face palm ourselves because we just do not want to do that. <laughs> you know? Including myself. Hey, I keep I keep track of mine on a spreadsheet. I hate doing that kind of anything with spreadsheets. <laughs> I'm like I glaze over. Um, yeah, not a big part. Not not a big fan. But but there's also a whole lot more to this. Is all as you know by listening to this and being a creator. Like titles are one part of this equation. It's a crucial part. Um, yeah, but the content itself makes a big difference too. People are just waiting for a reason to click off and building tension and creating intrigue. All that begins with the title and thumbnail, but then your content needs to pick up where that left off and continue to build more tension and intrigue all the way up to the very end of the of the content. And so if you can do that and you can create your, your content, you can create your titles and your thumbnails all with tension and intrigue in the mind, you'll be much closer to earning clicks and getting to tell a story and then hooking them and with effective call to actions at the end and getting them to really um, go on and watch another video of yours and doing that over and over and over again, which is critical to growing on YouTube, not just getting someone to click and watch, but getting them to holding their attention and then getting them to click and watch another video and another video and increasing that viewing session. Those are all very positive viewer signals to YouTube that they, that they look at. So um, getting them from the beginning of your content to the end, and it all starts with your titles and your thumbnails, but in this episode, your title. So if you want to talk with us a little bit about some of the things that you're working on with your channel, we'd love to do that in discovery call and just hear your story um, in a free 15 minute call. We can't go too deep into it with you into, into your channel on that type of call, but we'd love to at least kind of get to know you, hear what you're working on. And, and, uh, and, and if, and, and if you have a goal that's to grow your channel and to reach more people and change their lives and grow, grow your business around that, we'd love to spend that 15 minutes just taking a quick look at your channel and hearing your story and then just seeing if there's an opportunity that we can help you uh, with, Is it, whether that be one of our programs or something else or just a one-hour consultation, just kind of figuring out like, hey, here's what we think you need. You don't need this full big package over here. You just need a one-hour session and and uh, and you can get everything you need and more in that time to really reach your goals on YouTube. So go to videocreators.com slash discovery call to, to schedule a, a call, I think on Sam's calendar and is you're not doing them anymore, Blake. right, Ingrid? Blake is doing uh, them now. A little right? bit here and there, but mostly Blake and Sam, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So get to meet one of them, hang out with them, tell them your story, and see how we can continue to serve you and help you move forward with your channel. So videocreators.com slash discovery call. Every week, we like to wrap up these episodes with a power tip, something practical you can use to grow your channel right now. And Ingrid, you have a couple title formulas for people to use? What, what's a title formula? Yeah. This is something that we like to do with our clients. And I thought that this would be a great tip for everybody. Um, sometimes you can break titles down into formulas for those days where titles are seriously just hard. That's most days. <laughs> so, a <laughs> Yeah, but this is a really good go-to formula. Think of like the result that you're going to gain by simplified effort. And what I mean by that is think of the title, Better Homemade Pasta in Five Minutes, right? The result gained is Better Homemade Pasta in Five Minutes, the simplified effort. Or nail that high note by easily tweaking this. So whatever, whatever the result gained, the value that you're going to have, put that in the front, followed by how easy they can do that. And whenever you see channels that do this really well, they nail the click. They get lots of views, especially for their size. You know, they're doing something really right between the title and the thumbnail and other things that are going on. But take a look at their video page, like a zoomed out perspective. So scroll through and can you spot any patterns amongst the titles? Can you break any of them down into a formula like I just gave you? Create a list for yourself. That way, on those days where you're struggling to come up with a title, you have a simple tool that you can always go to for a winning strategy. 
We have a few different videos on our YouTube channel about how to improve your thumbnail game. So I know we're talking about titles here. We know thumbnails go hand in hand in that. And you will learn more about thumbnails and designing and crafting those. Click the link down in the description in, or in the show notes of this episode and learn more about that. But in the meantime, thanks for hanging out with us for another Video Creators Podcast episode. And we'll see you guys again next week. Thank you. Bye.